Welcome to this week's video. We are going to do a deep dive on customer journey mapping. This is a really useful business analysis tool that you should add to your toolkit. So let's jump in. Just before we start, actually, if you are new to this channel, you are very welcome. I'm glad you found us. This channel is all about learning about business analysis and your career as a business analyst. So as I say, this week is a business analysis technique. We go into quite a bit of detail with these deep dives, and I hope you learn something new. There will be a practical example as well as a how to do the diagram explanation. So sit back and enjoy. Oh, yes. And remember to grab a notepad. You might want to take some notes. See you on the other side. Great. So let's look at customer journey maps. What is a customer journey map? So essentially, it's a visual representation that outlines the sequence of the customer interactions with the business mm -hmm. from the initial point of contact through the various touch points with the goal of understanding the experience and identifying opportunities for improvement. So essentially, with the customer journey map, you are aiming to understand exactly what the journey of the customer is like as they progress through the different stages of your business processes. So let's have a closer look at what that might look like. First of all, let's understand why do we want to do a customer journey map? So I think we can all agree that we always want to, as a business or an organization, even if you are an employee, your goal is to improve the end customer's experience. It is also an opportunity for us to identify new opportunities where we can improve the journey of the customer and therefore potentially offer them more valuable products or valuable services as part of their journey through our business. And then, of course, we can also use it to boost interdepartmental collaboration. So this is where we understand each other's journeys from a customer perspective and then start to appreciate how we can potentially work together in a better and more efficient way to make sure that we all achieve our common goals together. So ultimately, it's all about improving the customer experience by fully understanding the journey they're on when they engage with us. So let's have a look now at what does a customer journey map look like? Well, you can see the template in front of you, and I'll talk you through this template. It's actually quite, quite simple to understand, yet a very effective visual diagram of the whole journey on one page. So let's look at the specific steps. First of all, you have to decide what is the journey that you'll be mapping. So what would be, is it an online customer purchase journey or is it potentially somebody walking into a store and their journey if they buy something and then maybe potentially bring it back for support? You therefore need to decide what is the scope of the customer journey that you would like to map. Then the second thing you have to think about is who, who will the customer be in this particular situation? So who is the customer? What is the persona of the customer? Now, this is probably a good idea for you to look at who is the overall organization's personas. And you will learn more about the technique of analyzing personas in a later lesson. But for now, a persona is the typical customer that your business serves. Like, for example, if you, for example, are selling coffee in a coffee shop, your typical persona is most likely going to be office workers if your coffee shop is based in the middle of the city. That would be one of your personas. So it might be, Jenny rushing every morning to get her coffee and get to the office on time. So you'll understand exactly what she needs. Then the next step, once you understand the persona that you are drawing your customer journey map for, you look at the expectations that particular persona would potentially have 
in the context of the customer journey that you are mapping. So for example, here you'll describe all the things that you believe that persona expects. And we'll look at an example very shortly. Let's run through the template. So once you've defined your persona and your expectations or their expectations, you need to just define what are those big stages of the customer's journey. And this is where you come and you say, you've got stage one, you'll give it a label, stage two, stage three, and stage four, for example, there could be more stages. And then you draw these columns, just like you can see it on this map. Then the next thing you'll do is you'll start, you'll break down each of the stages into the key steps or actions that your customer will take. And that's what you will drop down here, is just list a few bullet points as to what are the key things that your customer does or needs or wants in this particular stage. And you do that for each of these stages. Then the next thing is you look at the customer insights and comments. So this could be information that you've gathered by interviewing this particular persona about the customer journey. You could have done some research by looking at um, social media posts or reviews or customer feedback from the call center. There's lots of different places where you can go to try and understand a bit more what are the things that customers are saying about these different stages that we are going to be analyzing. And then the very last, but definitely not the very least, is to understand at each stage what, ex what feelings does your customer experience. And this is the last one where I've got a few emoticons to make it a very visual diagram. So I suggest you do the same. And you can also use a rating system from zero to 10 in case you don't have persona, uh, in case you don't have emoticons to use. Yeah. But here what you'll do is for the key steps, you will draw, is the customer feeling happy? Are they still reasonably content? Are they getting a bit upset? Are they feeling neutral? Are they desperately unhappy? And you will drop that down for each of the key steps within your stage and follow that through all the way to the end of the process. So let's now have a look at a real example. So this process is the online grocery shopping experience. We've got a customer persona here called Gemma. She's a young woman with three toddlers and wants to save time by buying her groceries online. She feels overwhelmed and needs efficiency in her life. So the expectations we have here is she expects to order all her usual groceries easily online and having it delivered within one day when she's home. Okay, so that's our expectations and you understand who's Gemma. Now let's have a look at what are the key steps or stages within this journey for her to be able to buy groceries online. So the first step is account registration. First thing she needs to do is to get an account with the grocery store. Then she can start doing online ordering of groceries. Then she'll receive her groceries or her delivery, and then she'll get support. So let's see the first few activities that she has to do. So create an online account with the grocery shop, and then validate her payment method. So she's done those two steps. And let's jump straight to the customer insights and comments. So yes, she's very happy that she's able to set up an account online. She's very happy about the fact that she can order her groceries online. And then when she gets asked to do her payment method and get it validated before doing any shopping, she's a little confused. Why do I need to verify payment at this stage? And then so on, you go to the next step. So here we've got Gemma needing to, she's browsing for some groceries. Then she adds the groceries to her cart. Then she specifies delivery time and she pays for her groceries. So let's see how she feels about that. Cool, I can search for all my favorites. So she's excited about the, the browsing process. 
which makes us assume that the interface is quite good. Then she starts to ask, why don't they have my brand? So she realizes that there's some products that's only available in this physical store and not online. So she's a bit disappointed again. Then let me just pay for what I have. So she gets some of the groceries that she was hoping for and is very disappointed that she can't get everything that she needs. But then when it gets time to receiving her groceries, she's pretty happy because she's got a nice time agreed and she's looking forward to having her groceries delivered. And then when she receives her groceries, she realizes that some important items got missing. So she's really upset and crying and sad. Then she's frustrated. She has to go to support and she's very disappointed because she thought the process will change her everyday life. That's already quite stressed. And then now she's decided, okay, I'll just go back to the store myself. So overall, I suppose you can see that this is not a great customer journey to, especially during the last few stages. So this gives you a good clue where to start looking for things to improve or suggestions to make as to where the process can be improved to help the customer journey. So the benefits of doing a customer journey map is it definitely helps us to enhance the customer experience. It gives us a great insight into the opportunities for improvement for new services, new products, or simply improved processes. And then, again, it will boost interdepartmental collaboration if we use it within the organization. Well done. You've made it to the end of the video. I hope you've learned something new about customer journey mapping. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn more things like this, as well as other business analysis career advice, please consider subscribing or perhaps just liking the video. Great. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.